Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Nudge Set Items window in Reaper. Now, for the longest time, I've used Reaper without using this window because you don't really need to use it. You can move things manually like this or turn on snapping and snap them to the grid. But the Nudge Set Items feature can do so much more. And it's a lot more precise when you need that. So let me show you how to use it. If we go to the view menu up here, we can go down here to nudge set items. And that opens up this dialog, although it's a lot easier with the keystroke. Right here, the N key. So hit N to open it. And we can close it hitting escape. So let's see what it does. If we choose the nudge option over here and position, we can change the position of selected items by different variables over here, like milliseconds, seconds, grid units, measures and beats. Let's set it to one beat. And let's select this loop. Then we can nudge it right by one measure or left by one measure. We'll put it back. Or grid units, it's set to quarter notes right now, right here. So go to the right by quarter notes or to the left. We can do samples, frames, pixels, and even item lengths or item selections. If we choose item lengths, and we're working on sections this long, we can nudge it by that length. And we can do multiple items as well. And we can also choose by notes. So we could put in one quarter note, nudge it to the right or to the left, or half notes, whole notes, or multiple of whole notes, like four for four bars. But that's just nudging position. We could also nudge left trim. Let's set this to quarter notes and just one. And we could change the left trim. Let's zoom in a little bit by a quarter note. Nudge it to the left and it trims out the left side or to the right to trim in. And we could do the same thing on the right side. Change it to right trim and trim it out by a certain amount, quarter notes, or back in. We could also nudge the contents. What that's going to do, it's going to change the contents inside the item, but not change the boundaries of the item. So we can move the loop inside here by a quarter note to the right or to the left by quarter notes by eighth notes, and just change the contents of what's inside each item without changing the item itself. So it's great for fine tuning each item by using milliseconds or even samples. You can get in really close and make sure the content starts on the grid. So if we change this to milliseconds, let's make it 10, we can nudge the contents to be closer right in the bar, like that. We could also duplicate from this dialog. So if we want to duplicate this drum loop, let's set it up by the item length, nudge it right, and it creates another one. Let's zoom out so we can see it better, and just create duplicates just like this. And we could also move the edit cursor. Nudge it right. We can move the cursor around to place it where we want. So that's using nudge. But we could also use set. And that's going to set our items in exact places. Or we could use the cursor. So we could choose 
measures and beats, and move our cursor to bar three, apply move, and our cursor goes there, or two. But we could do the same thing with our items. Let's choose position. Let's put this on bar four right here. Apply move, and it moves it to bar four. Bar five. And we could apply these moves by hitting return. Let's set it back to bar three, hit return, and it applies that move. And we could do it by seconds, measures, samples, frames, and pixels. And that's just for position. And I should also show you right down here is relative set. So if I move the synth line to bar four and the piano to bar five, if I want to move them as a group to a different spot, if we don't choose this relative set and we select them all and we type in and move them to that place, they're all going to move separately. But if you want multiple items to move relative to where they started, just choose this first. Then if we move it to a new place, it's all gonna move over based on the earliest item. So it all moved together. Let's put it at four, same thing, or three. But if this is not set, they're all gonna move to bar three. And again, that's just position. We can do the same thing for our left trim, we could set it to bar four, and it trims all of it to bar four, or five, or back to three. And the same thing with right trim, we could trim it back a full bar to bar six, or we'll make it longer to bar eight. And we could also adjust the left edge to be bar four, or the end position to be bar eight, like that. And again, we could duplicate it and put it at bar eight, and that puts it right here. We could put another one on bar 13, allowing us to quickly duplicate items and put them wherever we want. Let's undo that. Now this one's kind of interesting. We could put our cursor right here. Then we can select just the loop. We can choose right here, get cursor. And that puts the cursor time right here. And we can move the position of this item to that cursor. Apply move, and it moves to the cursor. Move the cursor over here, get cursor, puts the time here, apply that move with selected items and they all move to the cursor. It's kind of handy, and it'll work with the other variables as well. So I can put the cursor right over here, select the drum loop, change this to end position, get cursor, hit return, and it moves it right to that spot. So that's pretty much it. That's the nudge and set items window in Reaper. I find it very helpful when you want to be precise about your movements, where you move things, or how far you move them from where they started. So I hope you learned something, I hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Mom.